Hey everybody, it's Primordial Pumpkin Playthroughs, not my real name, but I'm here to show you episode 3 of Fable 2. So if you've watched the other two episodes, I welcome you back. And if this is your first time joining us, then I welcome you front. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So we're going to leave the old tomb area because last time I kind of missed a little dive spot. I said if I'd remember, we'd go back and see what it was. Um, I thought it might be a weapon, but we're gonna find out. Now, most of the dive spots, treasure chests, dig spots, things like that, have random loot associated to them by a loot table. So they, they, since this is like the beginning of the game, pretty much, we'd be getting like level one loot, right? And it'd be randomized. But there are a couple of things that are very specific so every time I've played this, there's always been a sword upgrade and always been uh, a ranged upgrade, we'll say, because there's the bows, the crossbows, and the um, revolvers and, and rifles, etc. So there's different kinds of firearms or different kinds of ranged weapons. Usually, um, I've always ran into actually a, an upgrade for each of them. We only found the sword upgrade, the melee upgrade. Now here is a potion of life, so that's not the weapon. Um, again, if you watch the last episode, my dog's been kind of, well, let's just say he's unique. He hasn't been like the previous dogs I've had on different heroes in this game, because he doesn't want to dig anything up. He must have been uh, listening when I told my other dogs that they were getting kind of annoying, barking every five seconds, wanting me to dig stuff up. So he came into this world like, how am I going to do that? I'm not going to ask you to dig anything up. So perhaps it was a dig spot that had the other weapon. We have an upgraded sword or an upgraded melee weapon. It's a cutlass. We uh, don't have the upgraded ranged weapon, but we don't really need it. It's just kind of nice to, you know, find upgrades. But we did get this potion of life. And a potion of life, as you can see, is a five-star item. It's not a level one on the level one table. This is a big, big uh, find early on in the game. This will increase the length of our health meter. I'm going to use it a little bit later because it also will heal you. So if I take a little damage down there in the tomb, I'll go ahead and heal myself up and extend my health meter. Now last time we went around and we were just finding treasure chests and um, looking for loot in the water, etc. Now we're moving on with the storyline. We have to come into the old tomb. Occasionally you might see a black flash like that. I'm sorry about that. I forgot to run the, this through OBS, so I tried to cut out as many as I could, but there's still a few in there. As you can see, my dog was uh, pretty scared in here, and all you have to do is go over to him and praise him, and he'll Don't be alarmed. get in a better place. I'm speaking to you through the guild seal. You will need to jump into that hole to continue. Don't worry. The water at the bottom will break your fall. All right. So we got to dive down there, which means there is no leaving once we start this. So we got to go all the way through to find our way out. Just glancing over here, you can zoom in like that with the left bumper and kind of take a close look at everything around you. It's, again, Xbox 360 game from years and years ago, 2008, I believe. But um, still worth looking at if you appreciate the uh, decor of the world. So anytime you dive down, always look behind you because that's the first thing you want to do usually is just follow the golden trail and move on with the quest. I'm not that kind of player. I like to look around. And even though I've played this game many times, I'm going to look around uh, for you guys. And it's been a while since I've played it, so, you know, there might be things that I forgot. So our dog jumped, uh, hopefully jumped down behind us. Uh, sometimes he'll get kind of far behind gives uh he has to muster up a little more courage every once in a while to to keep up you can see he's uh, kind of sad again so if you're close enough to him you can use the d-pad down in the bottom left it's got the praise uh, button on the right the other one is if you want to tell your dog off and you'd be some kind of monster if you do that but uh praise him a little bit he'll get back into a good mood and uh get some courage so we're just looking around, but but when you do dive down from a high place like that, usually just go forward. You don't want to do that. Uh, you want to look around, see if there's any hidden things behind you. Here's our first 
encounter with the combat in this game. Now, the yellow button on the controller is Y, and that is uh, to shoot ranged weapons, while the blue button is X, and that is to melee. And you can see they drop different colors of orbs. Now there's green, yellow, and blue right now. Those green orbs hold the knowledge and experience of the creatures that you kill. So you see how we got a number of different orbs. We got the green ones, which you can uh, use for any kind of uh, combat upgrade. You have the yellow ones, which are specific to skill, the blue ones, which are specific to melee, and the red ones, which will be specific to magic. Um, We'll go ahead and use that potion of life now. Heal us up, extend our meter. There we go. Now the other thing uh, that the game tried to do was make it so it rewarded you for the type of combat that you do. And there we go. He's uh, he's at least decided to start alerting me to some treasure. He wasn't doing that the last episode. So something kind of reset in him. That's good. Now, um... How it rewards you is if you, let's say you just love melee, well, you're going to get a lot more blue orbs that fall with melee. And uh, then you're going to be able to upgrade your melee skills faster. So it kind of rewards you. If you like shooting a lot, then you're going to get a lot more yellow orbs and you're going to be able to upgrade your skill or your ranged, um, your ranged talents a little bit faster. So it rewards you for the way you do fight. Uh, however, the combat isn't super inspiring. It's almost more of a hack and slash. There's not a whole lot of strategy in any of it. There's a boss here or there where you'll have to use a little bit of strategy. But for the most part, you can just kind of bully your way through this game as far as the combat. So the combat's fun, but it's just not very intuitive. It's not very deep in any way. So... If you like games beyond hack and slash, there are games like Witcher 3 that make you think a little bit more um, before you get into combat. It's not necessarily just rushing blindly forward unless you just happen to be an overpowering, overpowered uh, spot. So here's one of the rings. This would be a level 1 ring if you uh, read that on the screen there. Level 1 ring. You might be able to marry a... Um, Someone who just doesn't really care about money, or maybe a poor person have in the to game. shoot the switch to go any further. With that ring, but a posh person would not want it. Here's a flit switch. Now it's yellow, so we just got to match that up with a yellow button on the Xbox controller, which is the ranged weapon. Down there, you see a little ripple. It kind of looks like a dive spot. It's not. I know this. I just wanted to show you. It's not a dive spot, so don't worry. We're not missing any loot. Um, but yeah, again, everything's color-coded as far as combat. So if we run into more flit switches, we look at the color, and then we use the corresponding button on the Xbox, which would be melee, magic, or ranged. Now, we don't just want to follow the golden trail forward. We want to look around at every little side passage we can find. Our dog's still not asking us to dig anything up, but there is a treasure chest. So because he's not really... Um, working on on uh, getting us to dig things up there we go rusty mace it's actually worse than our rusty cutlass crude as crude as uh, and ugly as it is effective one can imagine the mace being um well i missed the rest because once again i record my audio after the gameplay but basically it said something about the uh, first people in the world would be wielding those now we can see here we have three melee weapons now. We started with the long sword, but um, the light blue is what we have equipped. So we have the rusty cutlass equipped. It is a better sword. It is normal speed like the long sword, but it does more damage. Now the rusty mace will actually do more damage than the cutlass we have, but it's slow speed, so it takes that in account. Um, now it does have an augment slot. And that, if you remember from the last episode, I was telling you, you can augment slot means you can put a gem in it that has additional abilities. So if you had a good gem, a good stone uh, to put in there, then it might be worth it to use that um, 
to use that weapon. And some of the slow weapons, like hammers and things, they're fun to use. So it just depends on what kind of melee combat you like. More beetles to beat up on. Looks like the dog is sad again. Again, uh, if the D-pad lets us interact with it, we can just praise it real quick. And if not, then we can go to the radial and cheer it up that way. And you don't always have to be facing the dog to cheer it up either. Um, sometimes you just do the praise action and you won't even be facing him unless you have a good effect on him. Again, you can see it's pretty easy, especially with the uh, first enemies we face. The combat is not anything to write home about. You just shoot from a distance, get most of them taken down. Now, I'm kind of wondering, anytime I play a game like this, I look at stuff like this, like, what? Who, who is lighting these torches? Like, this is like a cave. You had to dive down to get into it, and all these torches are just lit, and they're, like, not burnt down or anything. Now, look, I know it's just the decor of the world, but when you think about, like, logical things in the world, I've always thought that when I was, like, in a cavern or a cave of any sort in any RPG game. I'm just like, who's lighting these? Like, all these are lit up. Whose job is it? To come? <laughs> Whose job would it be to come down here, dive down, and light everything up? Now, the obvious answer would just be, oh, it's magic. <laughs> but, all right, so we're looking around. Here's a skeleton. And what do we got there? We got Brendan's Diary. This appears to be a page from an explorer's diary recording the details of an expedition into this cave. Third day, my hand is shaking from exhaustion, but I must remain vigilant. I almost nodded off last night as we camped around the fire, but still managed to keep an eye on Der Eric and Drake. I have seen the greedy glimmer in their eyes. They mean to make the treasure theirs. Perhaps it is time to make one make use of the poison. Ooh, Brendan. So, <laughs> he's dead. Came in with two other guys. Now, again, this is a thing that Fable loves to do. They are big on humor, so uh, they'll put all sorts of things that are supposed to just tickle your brain a little bit. So we're going to read um, that diary, and maybe we'll find the other two skeletons. Looks like here's another one. One of his, his compatriots came in here with, Eric. Eric's letter says, this unposted letter was written by a member of an expedition of treasure hunters. Dearest Harriet, our voyage to the entrails of Bower Lake has taken a turn for the worse. I only hope to survive to see daylight again. You were right about Brendan and Drake. They are selfish brutes conspiring behind my back, plotting to murder me so that they can keep the treasure to themselves. But fear not, love, for I plan to poison their water supplies while they sleep. Soon we shall be rich. Feverishly yours, Eric. So, <laughs> he, he didn't make it either. Uh, so two down, <laughs> looks like there's one other guy. Now, kind of, uh, kind of would find themselves in a bad spot here, having to dive down. Uh, they didn't die when they hit the water, but something happened where they started becoming wary of each other. Like, who lit this torch? I'm just wondering, who lit that torch? Right? How many times do they have to come down and light that? <laughs> but anyway, um... These uh, three adventurers come through here. Now, if you're not looking around, you're not scouting out, you're not exploring, you're never going to find stuff like that, these little hidden gems. And again, this is a big part of this game is the humor. So it's not just meant for uh, just the straight storyline. Read stuff. Read uh, tombstones and read uh, books and pieces of paper and all sorts of things that you find. And it looks like... Uh, cool little mushrooms and then we have a third skeleton and here's Drake's suicide note on this tattered piece of paper are the last words of one Drake Morton explorer and treasure hunter a man can only be pushed so far before he breaks five nights without sleep while those villains schemed behind my back losing a foot to a giant beetle that never ending attack of hiccups well it was all worth it for I have found it yes the treasure is mine who knows what great hero made use of this magical gem. All I know is that neither Brendan nor Eric will ever get their hands on it. I am planning to poison them both tonight. Then I'm throwing the gem into the lake and poisoning myself too, just in case. Nobody makes a fool out of Drake Morton. <laughs> so if you read it, it's absolutely ridiculous. All three of them die. All three of them were trying to poison each other. This guy poisons himself in the end just in case. So just little jokes that uh, and, uh, British wit that 
that finds its way into the game uh, ever since Fable 1. Fable 1, Fable 2, Fable 3 all had lots of it. So here we are uh, jumping down and following the golden trail. Looking out for more beetles to give us a little more combat experience and more orbs. And again, the orbs, the orbs are used to purchase new abilities. So that's how you kind of level up in this game is you don't really, you know, you don't really have like a level but or uh, gear that's better or anything like that. It's just um, these orbs and these orbs allow you to get um, bigger and better um, abilities. Now some abilities like magic, they will have like levels to them. So you'll start out with a one level one magical spell and then you can go up to two, three, four, and then Those five. Green orbs and each time it gets more powerful. Of the creatures that you kill. Now when it gets more powerful, it allows you to take on uh, stronger opponents, of course, uh, while suffering less damage. And the effects of the spells increase as well. Um, and then uh, as far as the other skills, you just get cooler skills. Some of them are good for achievements and not really for combat. But, um, some of them are just fun. Like eventually you'll be able to like target small mi micro target with your bow. So you'll be instead of like just shooting like that, you'll be able to actually like target specific parts of the enemy. So like you can shoot the sword out of a a skeleton's hand, for instance, right? And knock it to the ground. Um, or you can do headshots and stuff on, on bandits. Like, So there's different abilities that make it more fun, make combat a little bit more fun. But again, it's it's nothing, nothing super exciting, but it's fun if you like hack and slash. All right, we got another little circle, which means we've arrived at another little uh, destination where we're going to look around a little bit. Looks like a flit switch just flew up into the air. That'll be yellow, so that's range. And now it's blue, so that's melee. And back to yellow. Nothing too complicated there. Uh, flit switches have played their part in fable and if we get the expansion on fable 2 um, there's actually a lot of puzzles on this island that have to deal with flit switches where they become a little more uh, a little more fun rather than just you know hitting them from from right there so I'm looking at this because some of these will light up green and you can loot them Usually they'll have books because they're old bookcases and stuff. Knock down some dressers and drawers and etc. Um, you take the book, you read it. Most books are just for reading, and then uh, they give you a little information, a little lore about the world. They might reference Fable One or have some jokes on them, etc. And then you can sell them and get a little bit of gold. But some books are like training manuals for you to learn more. Uh, expressions on your expression wheel, you know, your little emote things, or um, your dog to learn some abilities as well. They can become a better fighter, they can become a better treasure hunter. Uh, he still hasn't been asking me to dig anything up like he usually does, but um, as we... let's read this. The end is almost nigh. This is a collection of predictions and doom mongering from the mystic uh, and soothsayer Arthur Dandelion. His more cryptic visions, such as the one about two brothers of little wit who shall release howling death upon a town of blood, have invited speculation and much shrugging of shoulders. Among his other prophecies is the one that foresees the invention of a machine that will aid in the cleaning of soiled garments. His most famous warning is the one that predicts of the end of the world. According to Dandelion, it will not come suddenly, but the ground shall shake and the past shall erupt into the present in a most bloody manner. All right, so, and, and then it goes on. You can uh, pause the screen if you want to read it all. But there was a reference to Fable 1 right, right in that book. So uh, we read it and then we sell it. Hero o Oakvale. Um, this one again, you can you can read on there. This whole thing is a reference to uh, Fable One, 
and the battle you have with a with the boss uh, if you get fabled the lost chapters or or the uh, remastered version they have uh, fable anniversary and so for someone who's played fable one this will make more sense and it's just a little throwback it's kind of fun to um to read but as far as uh some of the other books they're just they'll just give you lore about the world so all the uh, three Fable games, the three originals, one, two, and three, um, they all have to do. Uh, they're all in the same area. They're all the same land. You start out in Bowerstone. You start out in another town. You go to Bowerstone, and Bowerstone is, you know, like just small and building. And then Fable Two is a few years after that. It's a lot bigger. And then Fable Three is years after that. You know. By a few years, I mean, you know, I think it's like 50 to 100 years between each game or something like that. So um, these are definitely, they're kind of funny to read or they give you the lore. So you can pause it and, and read it uh, before you go on. And he is alerting me to these treasure chests, which... You know, most of the treasure chests you'll be able to see on your own, but every once in a while he'll bark at something that's like behind a wall or something, and it's uh, it's nice because then you remember to go back there and check. See, so always just push against these and see if any of them have anything in them. And there'll be other places like this uh, with these old bookcases and drawers and chests and and such. So. So out we go, just following the golden trail again. Beyond these broken doors lies the Heroes Guild. This whole area, the Heroes Guild, is a throwback to Fable 1. For centuries, this academy trained the most supremely gifted sons and daughters of Albion, bound together by the blood that flowed in their veins. Once worshipped by the people of Albion, the great heroes came to be feared and hated. No man alive today remembers the night the guild burned, and now it lies forgotten. But the heroes are not all gone. You are here, and that same heroic blood flows through you. Look around at these walls. Your forebear, one of the mightiest heroes who ever lived. At a young age he suffered a devastating loss, from which he never truly recovered. But when the world tried to crush him, he fought back. He grew strong, strong enough to reshape the world as he saw fit. You must do the same. The guild has reacted to you. Step into the light. Learn the true power of heroes. All right. So again, this whole place is a throwback to Fable 1. So people who play Fable 1 will have a little nostalgia looking at this. Again, this is many years after the Fable 1 uh, hero would have lived, and we are from that bloodline. We step in the golden light here, and something's supposed to happen. Your blood is awakening. You can now channel the experience you have collected into strength, skill, or will. Strength improves combat with hand-to-hand -hand weapons. Skill allows you to shoot faster and with greater accuracy. Will gives you control over the forces of magic. Before you is a colors gate. It reacts to the will of one who seeks to use it. You have not been able to use will yet, but the simple act of reaching this place has given you will experience. You need to learn a will ability to activate the color's gate. So will is just the name of magic in this game. Of course that one's red, our red button. Now use the knowledge you have gained so far to better yourself in strength, skill, and will. But we'll have to learn a magic spell and I'll just let you hear about them. Shock stuns your enemies and blasts them with lightning. Inferno calls forth magical flames to scorch and burn your foes.
Time control allows you to slow the world around you or to move with incredible speed. Blades creates magical swords to impale your enemies. Vortex creates a powerful windstorm that will pummel your enemies with nearby debris or even other enemies. Chaos confuses your foes, making them unpredictable. They may flee, attack their fellows, or even fall in love with you. Force Push sends a blast of energy towards your enemies, hurling them into nearby objects. It is very effective in confined spaces. Raise Dead causes the bones of the recently deceased to rise and fight for you. Force Push sends a blast of All right, now I'm going to go with Force Push. It's a very useful spell. It's a little bit different than the rest and it's uh i think it's the best for combat maybe not the most pleasing to use it's fun to use like the lightning spells and stuff but now we look we got enough orbs to buy something else see the blue orbs you can combine with the green orbs the green orbs can be spent in any section down at the bottom you'll see how much each costs so that like this one costs 450 Special moves, uh, we, or we could get a skill and other abilities, ability. Here would give us the, the roll in combat. Accuracy. This would more give us more accuracy, which also does more rifles, range damage. And the other one's actually melee speed. speed. The um, be able to we have 431 enemies. points if we combine our yellow and our green. So we wouldn't be able to get that one. We would be able to get Dexter Styles here, which gives us a roll when we're in melee combat. Kind of useful if you're fighting like a lot of guys at once and you're taking taking some damage. Excellent. Just uh, kind of roll away from them. The power so I like to learn that early on. And here we Use go. We're going to hit this flip switch with our force push. And power up the gate. Once activated, it will allow you to travel back to Bower Lake. Well done. Now you are ready to begin your journey. Use the Cullis Gate. Now this treasure chest, when you try to open it, it wants you to go to Fable2.com, which I believe no longer exists. But when I played this, uh, when the game first came out, it had a uh, you would go to Fable2.com and redeem it. And I believe it had some potions and stuff, but uh, the main thing was a full-size chicken outfit. Head to toe. You look like a giant chicken running around, so it was pretty cool. I think we can still buy one in another city, though, so we might still have the opportunity to see what that looks like. But now, it's time to see what our will can do. And again, in this game, will is just another name for magic. We have the force push spell. If we hold it down, it'll do an AoE, but you are kind of susceptible to being hit while you charge up that AoE. Um... So we probably won't use it right away, but I'll show you once we have a little more health or a little more um, durability with that side. But here you can just single target different enemies. Nothing too crazy, nothing too hard. These enemies aren't uh, extremely difficult or anything. But you can also charge up and then target a single enemy as well to hit them harder. As you can see on the D-pad there, it's got like that, uh, it's got you basically or, or some kind of humanoid version. Just lets you know that you have enough points for another ability or enough orbs. And here we'll unlock the block skill. And as you can see, the next brutal styles, level two, would be flourishing attacks. Those green orbs hold the knowledge and experience of the creatures that you kill. And again, uh, she says, hold RT to collect orbs. That's what we've been doing. Every time the orbs drop, you hold RT and they all come to you. If you're fighting like on a ledge, 
high up or something, the orbs will fall off. So you'll have to hold RT and they'll come from all the way down where they fell. And so sometimes you'll have to hold RT for quite a while before it, um, before you get all the orbs. So if you don't like to waste the orbs, you want to hold it down until uh, you absolutely feel there are no more, no more left. Now again, we can go up here because the golden trail will eventually write itself and let us know where we need to go, just like that. I wanted to go through here because we still haven't found the rubber ball. There's a rubber ball you can find to play fetch with your dog, and it's over here somewhere. So, But you have to dig it up. Oh, there we go. So he finally decided, finally decided, that, uh, <laughs> that he's going to um, lead us to a dig spot. And this is what you normally, like, we probably should have had about eight of those down there in the tomb, so. But we'll go back in the tomb. Actually, every time he levels up in his treasure finding, he'll be able to find treasure in spots that you have already gone by, so. All right, so we found a little rubber ball to play. Fetch with him. Makes a little joke about canine and fable, which is about Cain and Abel in the Bible little biblical joke there um, the ball is like any other expression where you can hold it for the perfect throw or a very very <laughs> strong throw sometimes too strong looks like that went in the water so we'll kind of come down here and just do a, a small little throw so you can see what it looks like when he chases the ball down so instead of holding it down I'm just gonna tap it instead when you tap an expression um, it'll do like the weakest version of it. There we go. And it comes back and drops the ball. And now it's rolling down the hill. <laughs> and it disappears. But you don't have to, uh, you know, catch it or pick it up or anything. It just, um, it's forever in your inventory now. So, uh, one thing I like about the Fable games is the moon, man. They just hit that moon just... They do a good job. It's always big and full and just uh, looks great with the landscape. Makes for really good screenshots. So just before we uh, get get back on our way for our next quest, just going to do a little bit of exploration. Uh, I do want to show you, like there's a little bunny rabbit. It's in pink. If we take our ranged weapon and we take the safety off, we can actually kill it. And while I don't plan on doing lots of dirty things in this game. I'm just going to show you. We take the safety off here. Now it's targetable. We kill it. But look, five immoral points. You've performed an evil deed and damaged your moral standing in Albion. So, depending on who you want to be and how you want to live your life <laughs> in this game, you know, there are consequences to it all. Looks like a, a chest. This is one of those ones that takes silver keys, as we found in the last uh, episode of Fable 2. We have several silver keys, dog tricks, the bunny hop, animal lover, dog trainer, and circus owner Rufina Musket wrote the series of books to pass on her intimate knowledge of canine psychology. So basically, if you do one of the below um, abilities on your radial, dance, laugh, whistle, play, the lute, uh, or strike a heroic pose after you teach him. So we just, uh, we just taught him the bunny hop. Now he will do a bunny hop if we do one of those expression so I'll do a dance here and now he does a bunny hop so there will be plenty of expressions the dog can learn and plenty of expressions we can learn <laughs> he just rolls on his back wants well, a belly rub we don't have a button for belly rub though so onward we go our quest objective is just up there but I want to show you something special that's over here that'll be a uh, recurring theme in the game. Just another thing to collect, for lack of a better word. But there are these, which are demon doors. Ah, is this a thespian appearing in our midst? Someone who has experienced life who can compliment my words with a worthy performance? I am Albion's finest tragedian, author of 7,452 plays, and I am now putting the finishing touches on my crowning masterwork. Perhaps you could assist me?
Splendid, splendid. All you have to do is accompany each of my lines with an appropriate expression. Just let the power of my imagery guide you. Every demon door has their own tasks they want you to do. Rupert was perambulating down the street with his friend when he burst out laughing. So he wants us to do these expressions. I'm afraid my artistry far exceeds yours. You need to learn more acting skills. See the world. Experience its joys and its pains. And come back when you are ready for such a demanding room. So we'll need to learn more expressions before we come back. We'll just remember where the demon door is. If we do everything he wants, he'll open up and there'll be a treasure inside. Uh, some kind of reward. But we'll have to learn a lot of expressions actually for this one. So we just remember where he is and we'll come back later in the game when we've learned a lot more expressions and hopefully we can do every expression that he kind of wants us to do to help him with his play. And if we do, he'll open up and something special will be inside. So here's a little circle, meaning we've got to our destination. Apologies, citizen. The road to Bearstone is closed due to the bandit activity. I'm afraid that as long as the bandit thag is alive, the road stays closed. If you're in an hurry like, you can always take care of thag yourself. So, the road to Bowerstone is closed. It would seem Thag has been capturing traders on their way to the Bower Lake camp. He is a danger to all and must be dealt with. With your new power, you should be able to defeat him and his gang and continue your quest. No doubt they're at his camp near Bower Lake. Alright, so we know what we need to do next. We need to go fight Thag. That'll be on the next episode, episode 4. And this is where I leave you. So thank you very much for joining me. Hopefully you had some fun uh, seeing a world possibly that you haven't seen before. And uh, I hope to see you again in the next episode.